Welcome to this next video in the playlist of Principles of Mechanical Ventilation. Um, in this video we're going to talk about phase variables. Um, we've introduced a little bit of this before, but we're going to expand on it a little bit and define what some of the phase variables are, so we can start to apply that to some of these new modes of mechanical ventilation that we're going to be learning. Okay, so let's get started. What What is a phase variable? So a phase variable is uh, is something which happens within this breath type. So you can see here that we have a couple of phases of a breath. We have some key milestones which we've talked about. We have, so you can see here this is our from the ventilator screen we showed in the last video. Here's a breath going in. Inspiration is this green square box and then it goes to expiration when it goes yellow down and then back up. So yellow down back up here to minimum flow. So we have inspiration and then expiration. Okay, so there's some key milestones at the breath. This first one here is what? how do we go from our expiration, so this baseline kind of expiration from the last breath, or and then how do we trigger into inspiration? How do we go from expiration into inspiration? What causes that to happen? What tells the ventilator that we want to go from expiration to inspiration? So this phase here we call the start of inspiration. Okay, so that's the first key milestone is the, the start of inspiration. Okay, and then inspiration is going to take place. We're going to have there's this going to be this sort of inspiratory phase here, where there's whatever's happening during the breath is going to take place, and then something's going to have to cause the breath to go from inspiration to expiration. So we call this point end of inspiration, or sometimes called end inspiration. What what causes the breath to what causes inspiration to stop and expiration to begin? Something's got to something's got to tell the ventilator that we want to stop inspiration and start expiration. Okay, so we call that point end inspiration, and then there's this expiratory phase and the sort of the baseline where we're still at baseline, waiting to be triggered back into inspiration. Okay, so the three variables that we're going to talk about in this video, the first one is going to be a trigger variable. So trigger. The second one is going to be a limit variable. Limit variable. And the third one is going to be a cycle variable. Cycle variable. So these might look pretty foreign to you at this point, but we're going to talk about what these are. So we already discussed initially that um, that something we, we kind of introduced the idea of a trigger variable but never really defined it very well so a trigger variable is what causes the start of inspiration what triggers us into inspiration what causes the ventilator go from expiration to inspiration so there's a couple of ways you can phrase this whatever is easiest for you to understand I like to use what causes causes start of inspiration Okay, so that will be our trigger variable. What is it that's telling the ventilator to go from expiration into inspiration, to start inspiration? Okay, that will be a trigger variable. Okay, then the next part is this limit variable. This is, um, actually maybe I'll go to cycle variable first and then we'll come back to limit variable because it's probably the, the least intuitive of the three. So the cycle variable is going to be at this point, right? End of inspiration. What causes the breath to go from inspiration to end the inspiration phase and go into expiration. We call that cycling a breath. What cycles the breath out of inspiration into expiration, okay? So from that, you, you can really phrase this however you like, but I like it like this. I say, what causes, what causes inspiration to stop and expiration to begin okay or you could say what cycles inspiration okay what what is it that's causing inspiration to end and expiration to begin is is there a certain is there a certain pressure that we have to reach before inspiration will end and expiration will begin is there a certain amount of volume we have to put into the chest before inspiration ends and expiration begins what is it that's going to cause us to switch from inspiration to expiration that's a cycle variable and a limit variable is kind of what happens in the in during inspiration what's going to happen during inspiration so a limit variable is a variable of some kind that is is 
held to a certain point. So we could say it's sort of limited at a certain point. Um, so a variable that's limited during inspiration, okay, but doesn't, but doesn't cycle the breath. Okay, so that's might be a little confusing at first. So what there's some a limit variable, something which is limited during inspiration, during this inspiratory phase but it doesn't cause the breath to end. It doesn't actually cycle the breath. It's just held to a certain point during inspiration. And when we get to our examples, we're gonna do this for volume control in a second. Um, hopefully this will become a little bit clearer. So let's arbitrarily change color and we will, we're gonna look at the control breaths. So we're gonna do this for volume control. Okay, we're gonna look at our control breaths and our assisted breaths, right? Because we're doing assist control, volume control. And these are gonna be different. So maybe we will color code these um, with what we did here. So this would be trigger variable is the start, limits to the start of inspiration. And then our limit variable is sort of most uh, um, relevant to the inspiratory phase here. And then our cycle variable here is going to be that end inspiration phase. Okay, so let's put down here trigger. Uh, and we'll do that over here as well, trigger. Excuse my writing. I'm, I don't want to keep you waiting, watching me write loads of stuff out. So tr trigger, limit, and limit over here. And the last one is cycle, cycle. So start thinking about what you think is gonna limit uh, trigger and cycle breaths in volume control. Okay, so that's what, we're gonna, that's what we're gonna look at right now. So in a control breath, what have we said about a control breath? We know that the patient doesn't really need to do anything in a control breath, right? I, I, one of the examples we use is a paralyzed patient who isn't going to trigger any breath. He's not going to make any efforts. The ventilator is just going to ventilate him based on our respiratory rate. Okay. So every, if we have a respiratory rate of 10, we said that every six seconds, the ventilator is going to deliver a breath, right? So what is the, what is the variable that's causing us to go from expiration to inspiration in a controlled breath? Well, it's going to be time, right? It's just that six seconds going by. That's what triggers the breath. Another six seconds goes by, they get a breath. Another six seconds, they get a breath. So the trigger variable is time, okay? Um, and then, so we're looking at volume control. And then what cycles the breath in volume control? I'm gonna go again to cycle, then come back to limit. So we know that in volume control, the goal of, of the breath is, is to deliver a set amount of tidal volume to the patient. So in our examples in the last video, we used, we used 500 mils as our tidal volume. So it turns out in a volume control mode, when, once we've delivered that 500 mils, there's no need for inspiration to still be happening. That's really the end of inspiration, right? Because we've delivered the amount of volume that we want to deliver to the patient. So then we go into expiration, okay? So once we've delivered our 500 milliliters, inspiration ends. So the cycle variable is volume, right? Because once we get to our, our tidal volume, once we've delivered that to the patient, inspiration ends and expiration begins, okay? So volume is our cycle variable. And if you remember back, the other thing that we um, had in our volume control breath was flow, right? We talked about having that 60 liters a minute of flow with the square pattern of the flow waveform. So that 60 liters a minute is, that's happening through the whole of inspiration, right? But it's not causing inspiration to end. The 60 liters a minute of flow rate doesn't cause inspiration to end. That's just something we've limited during the breath. We've limited our flow to 60 liters a minute during inspiration. So our limit variable in volume control is gonna be flow, right? So what I suggest you do is once we finish these for our control breath and our assisted breath, maybe go back and watch the, the last video where we did that kind of introduction to the ventilator screen and you can see the numbers on the ventilator screen and, um, and see if you can really piece together in your head why 
it's time triggered, flow limited, and volume cycled. And just have a look at the screen and make sure you kind of understand why those are, uh, why that's the case. Okay. So next one is uh, our assisted breaths. How are the assisted breaths going to differ? Well, remember that we said that they really they get the same breath. The only difference is that one's triggered by the patient and one's triggered by the ventilator, right? One's triggered by time. So the breath is exactly the same in an assisted breath as a control breath, except for what how it's triggered. So we know that our limit variable is still going to be flow because they're still going to get 60 liters a minute of flow in that last example. And we know that the cycle variable is still going to be volume, right? Once we get to, once we've delivered all of our tidal volume, we cycle into expiration. So our, our limit variable and our cycle variable are flow and volume. They're the same. The only difference is, is that the trigger variable is not going to be time now, right? This is an assisted breath. This is patient, patient triggered, right? Patient triggered, but just writing patient triggered here isn't doesn't really doesn't really work. Um, what exactly is the variable which changes to tell the ventilator that we want to go from inspiration uh, that we want to trigger inspiration? When the patient triggers a breath, we talked about this flow trigger down here, right? Remember this from the last video? We said that if the patient generates three liters a minute of flow, they will t um, from in the circuit it will tell the ventilator that they want an extra breath, and that that's how they trigger the breath. Okay, so that we know we have flow is one. And it turns out, we haven't talked about this yet, you can also use pressure here. Okay, if the patient generates enough of a drop in pressure in the circuit, if they take a breath in, they increase the volume of their chest very slightly, which drops the pressure of the system, right? So if they make cause a, a change in pressure of a certain amount, which will set, that will also tell the ventilator that they want another breath. Okay, so we have flow, and pressure. Okay, so we can see that a control breath and an assisted breath are very, very similar, except that they're exactly the same, really, except the fact that one's time triggered and one is patient triggered. And the patient triggers that assisted breath either by changing the flow in the circuit or by causing a drop of pressure in the circuit. Okay, so in this video, we looked at trigger variables, what triggers the breath to start, what's limited during the breath but isn't doesn't cause the breath to end, and what is the variable that causes inspiration to end and expiration to begin? And these are called phase variables. And these are going to be pretty important when we start to look at all sorts of different modes of mechanical ventilation.